Welcome back to the boat cheat. Well, the, the cheat today is sweating the warp. This is a technique used by seamen of tall ships in the old days in order to magnify the force that they can apply. The example we're going to be using today is raising a swim platform, uh, but the same physics applies to either a swim platform lanyard or a mooring line or any line anywhere. Uh, once you've learned to do this, it's a really great technique. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit subscribe, help us grow the channel. Thank you. So let's see why that's so much easier by pulling on the middle of the lanyard like that. Here we have an image of a swim platform and a transom. You can see we've got a hinge point near the base of the swim platform and we've assigned an, a nominal weight of 80 kilograms to this swim platform which results in 800 newtons of weight force. When we pull on the lanyard or lift up the swim platform manually that weight force moves towards uh, the fulcrum and in, in fact passes the fulcrum of the hinge and so you end up with a geometric lock because the weight force of the swim platform is working down through a line which is inboard or forward of the fulcrum of the hinge. This means that just lightweight bolts are used to secure the swim platform uh, on a boat like this Sun Odyssey 349 because there's very little force to counteract. With the swim platform back in the down position and the lanyard now drawn in, we can see that that 800 newtons of weight force would translate into some turning moments around that hinge. So if we look at the weight force, it's acting in a clockwise direction in this viewpoint, and we can work out that weight force by taking the distance of the center of gravity of the swim platform from the fulcrum of the hinge. In this case, we've called it 30 centimeters, and that gives us a torque of 800 times 0.3 or 240 newton meters. If we wanted to move the swim platform up, we would have to create a larger turning moment in the opposite direction. So a counterclockwise turning moment in excess of 240 newton meters. We can work backwards then and work out what force is needed by taking the distance of the lanyard from the fulcrum of the hinge and then saying it's 240 newton meters divided by 0.6, which gives us a total force required of 400 newtons. Unfortunately, that's not correct. There's a small error here because that force is what's required if you pull perpendicular to the platform. In fact, we're not doing that. We're pulling along the lanyard. So we'd have to apply the sine and do a bit of maths and say that it's 240 divided by 0 0.6 divided by sine 45, which in this case is 0 0.71, which gives us a required force of 565 newtons. You could see from the video clip quite a lot of force was required to pull straight in on that lanyard. Not only that, it's not very easy to keep a good hold on it. Now we know though that we need 565 newtons in our example, let's see how we can go about achieving that more easily. If we were to go to the middle of the lanyard and pull perpendicular to it in any direction, be it up, down or transverse across the cockpit, which is how I did in the video, then not only is it really easy to get hold of the line, but also we magnify the force that we apply. This is how it works. In the initial movement of that line, we're pulling perpendicular and at the middle of the lanyard. And that creates another small right angled triangle with the pivot point on the swim platform. If we draw in the hypotenuse and put our number 565 against the tension needed on the lanyard itself, we can then use tangent to work out what force is required in order to achieve that 565 newtons. And it makes very interesting reading. Because initially there's a very small angle, then we have to multiply by a small angle. Initially that number is less than one and it increases by degrees, but let's take a, a, a small early example and say we'll go to 10 degrees and we'll say 565 times tan 10 is the force that's needed. Well, that will give us a very small number of around about 100 newtons. The reason for that is that tan 10 is only about 0.17. 
So obviously as the angle increases, then the benefit of tangent diminishes, but two other things are happening at the same time. First of all, the direction that the lanyard is pulling in is moving closer and closer to perpendicular to the swim platform, which makes it more efficient because the sign losses are being reduced. But secondly, the center of gravity of the swim platform is moving closer to the axis of its hinge, and therefore the number of newtons needed to make it move in the first place is also reducing. The net effect of this is that a pretty constant force, not quite constant, but close enough, is required in this example to raise the swim platform. And it's a lot less than the weight of the platform itself. This is why when we're sweating the warp on a, a mooring line, we tend to go to the middle of the span between the cleat and the fair lead. We pull on that middle and we don't go too far. We just pull maybe 20 centimeters. And then with the free hand, we take up the slack as we release so that we can start again. And by pumping a few centimeters at a time, we can get a massive magnification of the forces that we can exert using our arms. And the second trick is to not use your arms at all, but to lean back, use your body weight and let your legs do the work. So use big muscles, not small, and sweat the warp. I do hope this is helpful. If it is, don't forget to like and subscribe.